Point number three is the deliverance. Verses 25 through 27 say, When Jesus saw that a crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the evil spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently, and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet, and he stood up. So nobody up until this point was able to order this demon around. It was strong and it was stubborn. And then with one word, Jesus expels this demon. The power and the authority of Jesus is mind-blowing. Jesus, remember, is the one who caused thousands of demons who were inhabiting one man back in chapter 5 to tremble with fear. Their numbers gave them no advantage with Jesus. They were terrified of him. This demon didn't say he was terrified of Jesus, although I'm sure he was, but when no one and nothing else could move him from that boy, Jesus came up with one word and just commanded. Now, now notice Jesus identifies him, you deaf and mute spirit. So Jesus names the demon, and then he gives him a double command. He says, come out of him and never enter him again. I mean, the that demon just got evicted from his home, and he was permanently banished. Jesus said, what I open no one can shut in Revelation chapter 3, and what I shut, no one can open. The door to that boy was shut because of Jesus. Now, he didn't go quietly. That demon thrashed around, and he was violent, and it was a, it was a nasty scene, very traumatic. And, and I got to pause here a minute and just really let my heart bleed for this boy because you know, it was kind of the climax of his suffering because to pull that demon out of him, to, to eject that demon out of him, I can't imagine the physical and the emotional and the psychological and the spiritual agony and trauma that he went through in that moment when that demon was expelled from him. Whatever it was to him, it, 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 it just exhausted him because he was laying there and he was so pooped out that they thought he was dead. I love what it says, though. Jesus took him by the hand. Ha! Ah, this makes the incarnation worth it. That the Creator would come down in the flesh as one of us so that we could touch him, that, we could, that he could take his hand into ours and pull us up. Remember what John said in 1 John 1? He said, what we have seen, what we have heard, what we have looked on, what we have touched. Okay. Remember Thomas when he said, I will not believe until I have seen him and I have placed my hands in his wounds. And he touched the resurrected body of Jesus and the scars he placed his hands and his fingers on. Oh man, what an amazing moment this is here. And for this boy, what an amazing thing that, that there it is. There it is, the strength of Jesus lifting him up when he couldn't get up on his own. When you had no strength, when you couldn't go on, when you couldn't get up, he reached out his hand and he lifted you up. He took Peter's mother-in-law's hand when she was sick several chapters earlier with the fever. And he healed her fever, took her by the hand, and he lifted her up delicately out of the bed so that she was well. And Jairus' daughter, when he healed her, when he brought her back from the dead, it says that he took her by the hand and he lifted her up out of the bed. He will take you by the hand. When it's dark, he'll take you through the dark and lead you. When you're sinking, he'll take you by the hand and hold you up. When you fall, he'll take you by the hand and lift you. And when you cry out to him, he will stretch out his hand and grab hold of yours. Have you reached out for the hand of Jesus? He's reaching out for you.